Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 34 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about the rounding up the most sought after cloud computing certifications and what should you actually consider. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips about cloud computing certifications. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another cloud computing training show. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm glad I didn't have a certification to get on the show. I would have would have never made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we've got a, there's a fine line on this show. So uh, thankfully, you're you're well in the, above that benchmark. So uh, you yeah, know, it's great to have you on every show. You 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 bring a lot of value, and it's uh, it's awesome. So look, I mean, it, I think it's um a very interesting topic. We talk about many aspects of training and what needs to be developed within business and what people need to learn. And certifications are a big thing with, with you know people identifying with their future opportunity, future careers. So I think if we dig a bit deeper on this one, on this show, it's going to be a, you know, a really good turning point for a lot of people. So you know, how do you think that certifications are relating to long-term job you know, outlooks and opportunities? I think they're overvalued right now. I really do, as we're talking about certifications. I think we spend a lot of time thinking about who's certified to do what. And you know, I came from the days where everybody had uh, you know CNEs, you know, certified network engineers and uh, certified Cisco engineers when the internet was hot, and and those are kind of uh, you know kind of means of printing money. You know, that said, I'm, I'm kind of a hypocrite there because when people come to me and they say they're changing their careers you know, moving from a teacher to, or in, into IT, I always tell them to go get an AWS certified, you know, certificate, you know, basically as a jumping off point, as a proof point to get an entry level job. Uh, and they can start making some major bread. I mean, I already had a you know discussion with a friend of mine's son who was changing his career and he was able to, you know, make uh, some major money. And he had a you know, wife and kid and a family and that was very helpful for him. And I think that uh, people still rely on certifications as a means of kind of judging people because they don't have necessarily the skills in house uh, to assess somebody as whether or not they're, you know, actually is, uh, you know, either a book learning person or someone who can actually do a hands on job and make a good, you know, good certification. So going forward, it's a matter of balancing uh, the fact that we're having certifications out there that are practical, changing and basically going to have a reassessment process in, in the mix. And to the fact that people need to have on the job training to actually get the real experience they need to do their job. And, and this is something, you know, people have a tendency to kind of bypass. When we talked about the, you know, the ability to have a self learning person, someone who's able to kind of motivate a learning cycle into themselves. I would hire someone to have a certification, but my guidance to them would be, if you're unable to learn on your own, you know, pick up a book and figure things out because guess what? Whatever you certified in this year is going to be completely different next year. You're going to have to have the skills to pay the bills next year as well as this year. Um, I'm not going to have much use for you if you have to keep going back to class and getting recertified and getting, you know, taking new classes, things like that. You can spend the whole, your whole career in a classroom or a whole career doing CBTs. So you got to balance this stuff, which is good in certain aspects with kind of on the job training, I think, which is better. But I think the most important aspect of this, which should be someone who's self self learning uh, is able to, you know, and if if that means they're doing certification training, things like that on their own time, you know, that's a key motivator for me. But if they're somebody that kind of demands they get sent back for certification training on a constant basis, and therefore they're unable to be in the office to do their job, that's a bit of a trade off I probably don't want to make. And maybe I'm tyrannical, but uh, that's just kind of the way I feel. Yeah, look, I think we can only go so far with setting benchmarks around certifications. We've got to look at a bit deeper, you know, into the actual the people the people element behind the the technology because you know it's all very well and good that they can perform in a technical role. And I know we've spoken about this in you know various different shows that you know a certification gets potentially your foot through the door backed up with some experience. But equally, it's that you know the square peg in the round hole. If you haven't got the soft skills to fit within a culture. You know, it's it's detrimental to the project, which in effect detrimental to the project makes the project not be fulfilled, budgets, etc. You know, you you know, and you might not find that out, you know, until two or three months down the line that you've got the wrong cultural fit, depending on the 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 supervision of the team and how much the team are actually connected together. You know, and and you don't want to be two months into a project with the wrong cultural fit 
um, just because the person's got the, the certification. Because, you know, like you've said before, people leave, the good people leave because you've got the bad hiring that's not the right cultural fit. So, you know, I think you're right. It, they're, they're, they're a bit um, overrated. But again, they are so important. From a recruitment point of view, you know, the recruiters are out there saying, well, what's your cert- what, what are you certified in? What's your experience uh, within, that, within that remit? So, yes, you know, I, I understand they are overrated in that respect. But equally, unfortunately, sometimes for people that are out there looking for the work, they're thinking, what, what have I got to get to be the, the hot new buzzword on the, on the resume that's going to get me recognised for this position? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a sort of catch-22 for some people, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think that uh, in those situations, people are doing entry level stuff. Certifications are kind of a foot in the door. And I, I, I give lots of people my advice is go out and get a, and this was tops on the list of the article we're, you know, putting in the show notes, AWS certified solutions architect. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a clear path to some big paying job as long as you understand what's going on. My, my uh, guidance to them was also understand Google and also understand Microsoft and also understand Alibaba and don't go, you know, screaming from the room if someone asks you to use Azure. I mean, that's just kind of, it, it, you're, you're a certified cloud architect first, a certified, uh, you know, AWS architect second. And you kind of have to understand how everything works and plays well together. And if you're limiting your domain to, well, all I work is on AWS, you know, that's not going to work for most companies. They're going to want a more holistic understanding of the knowledge, dealing with people, dealing with the business. And you have to kind of understand that it's going to have to spread your wings and get into some uncomfortable, you know, spaces you may not understand. And then the AWS certification, you got to keep up with it, you know, going forward. I mean, AWS is added, adding five or six new services every week, you know, best I can tell. And so, what are those services? What do they mean? You know, should you use them? If you know, how do they fit? You know, what are the changing interfaces going forward? All that stuff should really be on the agenda. But you know, cert- certificate of cloud security from the Cloud Security Alliance. You know, certified OpenStack administrator, administration, things like that. We go from a very broad-based knowledge like cloud security. I mean, that's you know, hundreds of things you have to understand to you know make that work to something that's very specific, such as OpenStack administrator. Uh, so which ones are going to be more valuable, you know, going forward? Well, I think people look for specific skills like OpenSec administrator, but it's probably more valuable to be kind of a security professional going forward. Someone's really kind of aligned the fact that I'm going to continue my training, continuing my knowledge ongoing, and that's going to be something that I work on for decades and not necessarily is it going to be defined by my ability to pass a test, you know, which I did getting sort of a certificate of cloud security knowledge with the CSA. And I think that's fine. Go ahead and do that. And CSA is a great organization and more power to them. But you have to kind of think of this in a larger scale thing. And I think my worry and concern is that people are going to look at the certification as really kind of the objective they're looking to reach, where all it is is basically a stop and you it's in, in, in a journey, a longer journey that you need to take. And there's more work to be done. You're going to have to keep up with it. It's going to be an ongoing process. It really is an ongoing process. And that's something that I often advise and again, I think it's, it really is down to the individual, say a candidate or someone in the job market that's looking to get into cloud or is already in cloud and looking to move transition to a different contract or, or whatever it would be, or looking for that next challenge in their career uh, and not just a, you know, an increasing salary. It's, you know, what, what is uh, your market determining technology-wise? So who, who's using what within your market, maybe is a better way of, of putting it. What companies are in your top 10 that you'd like to work for, and what are they using with regards to their cloud? Are they AWS? Are they Azure? And look at how you refocus your, your efforts on, you know, building some sort of dialogue with that company, with the, the hiring managers with that company, with the recruiters that look after that organization from a, a hiring point of view, and make sure you're, you know, you're, um, you're, you're educating yourself on the market with within that cloud sector, within that organization. I think that's really key. And I think we've spoken about this on a couple of different shows as well, that you know, if you haven't done your due diligence and you don't know what that organization is using, then you know, you, you're really letting yourself down. You know, it doesn't take much nowadays to see, because a lot of the organizations are running, you know, telling the world what they're doing with cloud, Microsoft for argument's sake, or Azure, or yeah, sorry, Azure and Microsoft, same thing. But you've got AWS, I meant. And you know, so there's so much that's going on, and there's the 
software engineers are actually on Twitter talking about what they're doing for certain organizations and how they're embracing you know, AWS and, and all this sort of stuff. So there's, there's a, a real network out there for people that are um, looking to find work within a certain area or looking to find out what to retrain in. You know, I can always say, look, you know, the, what are you doing so far? Where are you at with your due diligence in your career? And then you, you get a really even playing field of where people are at, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, I think that uh, you're in charge of managing your own career. You're in charge of uh, obtaining your own skill sets, understanding your own knowledge base and figuring out a way that you're going to absorb knowledge over time. This is just kind of one way to do it. And I think this is, uh, you know, the wake up call here is that, you know, certifications aren't going to save you. But ultimately, you know, this is going to be there's going to be much better automated training out there for you to absorb. So there's really no reason why you can't understand it. I mean, uh, you know, I was listening to an interview with Mike Rowe uh, today, and he said something very profound. I mean, we have, you know, colleges and universities, they used to be worth it because we had access to information. They, they basically afforded us access to books, to people, to things like that. And now we have access to 98% of the information in the world in our pockets and on the phone. You know, we can take lectures from MIT. We can, you know, take watch this podcast, or excuse me, watch this video cast and, you know, and get the learnings that we teach them or other video casts out there to do it. And all you have to do is reach out and push your button. I mean, it's no better time to be someone who is going to absorb information than today because we're able to give it to you in any number of ways. So people who are motivated by that, get excited by that, are the ones who are really going to be accelerated in this business. Truly are, truly are. I, I, I totally second that one. And it, it moves on nicely. If we haven't already covered those top three tips, <laughs> we've given so many sort of great chunks of advice already on the show. So what are your top three uh, cloud computing certification tips there, Dave? Yeah, first and foremost, don't rely too much on cert certificates. I mean, I, I, uh, I can't stress this enough. And, uh, you know, I get resumes all the time where they have, you know, people that have certificates that go on two pages. And uh, it, it doesn't impress me. What impresses me is people who are able to learn on their own and basically move things forward. So it's okay to leverage them as a foot in the door, specifically if you're doing entry level stuff, you're trying to show people that you have some base set of knowledge to get an entry level position that you're gonna build upon going forward. Uh, however, if you're you know older in your career, you know, certifications are going to be one aspect of your training, not necessarily everything about it. So don't rely too much on them. Make sure to keep up beyond the formal training uh, going forward and figure out some way to do that. I mean, uh, CBTs are out there. YouTube has amazing courses, things like that. You know, learn your read, get your reading list on going every week in terms of reading blogs and podcast, listening to podcasts, listening to video casts, and you know, understanding and keeping up because it's important. Because if you're in the meeting with your colleagues and you're able to kind of produce something you just heard about as some kind of potential technology is going to solve the problem you're discussing. You know, that's a real knock out of the park. They're going to you know, kind of value your opinion based on the fact that you're keeping up. Um, watch for technologies that are here today and gone tomorrow. Can't stress that enough because if you're getting certified in a particular piece of technology, that technology could get bought by another bigger company and you year kind of be persona non grata. So watch the technologies that are at risk of being placed in the market and probably don't spend a lot of time getting certified in those technologies. Yeah, top tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. Because that was a mouthful, wasn't it? Top tips. I got that one right for the second time as well. <laughs> don't say that too fast. No, no, top tips. No, exactly. So don't get me started on that one <laughs> on, a, on a Monday morning anyway. <laughs> but no, it's we'll great. We'll get an no, on this course. <laughs> Sorry? We'll get an adult rating on this show. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly right. Well, thanks, Dave, for being part of the uh, training show this week. It's awesome as always. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for letting me rant, rant for uh, 10 minutes about this. <laughs> no, it's excellent. I, I love it. And, and also, um, David's got some great uh, Linda courses, which are in the link in the description box below. So if you are on uh, YouTube, then in the description box, there's a link to all these courses. If you're listening to the podcast, you may want to come back over to the YouTube channel to get that link. So um, just to offer the podcasters out there, come back to YouTube and uh, you'll get the link to all of David's cloud computing courses, which are pretty thorough and um, some of the best out there, actually. Uh, but look, you know, I hope you've enjoyed watching this week's uh, cloud computing training show. We've covered some great points. Uh, remember, you can always reach out to David and myself on Twitter. Uh, there's some little blue graphics on the screen now. So it's at David Linthicum. Uh, and I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, 
subscribe, comment and share to the channel and share the channel to your friends and your colleagues. Uh, but make sure you comment. We, you know, we want to find out more about what your things and thoughts are about what we're talking about. So thanks for watching and remember to uh, stay tuned for next week.